guys and ladies, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, finger placement for power chords today. Um, what you're going to want to do is, whether you're doing a two-fingered power chord, root five, or a uh, three-fingered power chord, root five octave, what you're going to want to make sure that you're doing um, is using individual fingers for each one of these notes. So um, most of you probably already know, so first finger for the root note, ring finger for the fifth, and uh, pinky for the octave if you're using a three fingered or just index finger for the root and ring finger for the fifth if you're doing a two uh, fingered version. Um, what I really caution you against doing is barring. I see a lot of guitar players in my practice, um, they come in and they're playing power chords and they're barring. What you end up with is if you're not very judicious with your right hand, you end up barring additional strings which is fine if you're going for a full bar chord, um, but if you're looking for just uh, the root five or root five octave power chords, um, you're gonna get extra notes that you do not want. Um, so, there we go. Um, power chords built off of the low E string versus power chords built off of the A string. Now, um, I strongly recommend that you go through and you learn uh, the names and locations of all the notes on your low E and A strings, and as a matter of fact, all of your strings, but specifically your low E and A strings. And the reason for that is this. Um, it's, you know, it sounds very, very cumbersome to a non-guitar player. Um, when you and they ask you, hey, what, what chord are you playing, man? You're like, oh, I'm playing a uh, five, uh, seven uh, power chord. And, you know, a piano player will look at you and say, okay, well, what what notes are you playing? And you go, uh, I don't know. And then you, you guys can sort of sit and fiddle around until you figure out what all the notes are. It's much easier if you just say to them, oh, I'm playing an A power chord. There you go. Um, so definitely learn the names of all the notes on your, on every single string, specifically low E and A for for the power chords. Um, remember, whatever note your index finger is playing is the letter name of that chord. Uh, you'll also notice that in books or in magazines, whatever, uh, power chords are also referred to as fifth chords or five chords. You'll see like E5 or C sharp five. And essentially what that's telling you is that it's a C sharp and then the fifth above it, which would be a G sharp. So it's just telling you exactly what the intervallic relationship within the chord actually is. Um, so now on to uh, a little bit more specific topic, uh, fingering uh, the power chord built off of the A string so that we're not getting the low E string ringing over everything. I, I hear this a lot with beginning guitar players where they, you know, they're able to physically play a power chord. Let's say they're doing a D sharp power chord here at the sixth fret. Um, you know, it sounds great if they're just very carefully picking just those strings, but then, you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, you're strumming away and you get that low E string ringing over the top of everything. And if you do that, I mean, it sounds really dissonant. And if that's what you're going for, you know, more power to you. But in m most cases, that's not what you're going for. So what you're actually going to want to do, um, I strongly recommend, uh, actually, if you can see, actually, you want to be fretting on the outer half of the fingertip, not dead center on the tip of it on the tip of it, but out actually on the outer half, on the thumb side. Um, and then you want the very fleshy tippy tip of your finger to actually rub up against the side of the low E string. That way when, you know, if and when you do hit that low E string, it's gonna be muted. So playing that same chord again, you know, you can't hear that over the top of it because it's muted. Um, I also recommend lying the first finger across the remaining uh, three strings, the G, B, and high E. And also, if you're playing the three-fingered uh, version, you can get what I like to say a little lazy with the, with the pinky and let the pinky sort of droop over and lightly touch the second string. And what that'll do is it'll mute out the unwanted higher strings. That's also very useful when you're playing power chords built off of the low E string. You want, again, you want these upper strings to be muted because they're not a member of the chord. Okay, um, so that pretty much covers it. Um, any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, uh, comments in the comment section, that's what it's there for, and I will see you folks next time.